Hello. Welcome to the Knit Girls. This is episode 131. Is yes. that right? Okay. That is correct. It's November 4th. Weezy's birthday is this week. Do I? Oh, is it? Yes. Weezy's okay. birthday is on the 7th. Weezy's my dad. Well, happy birthday, Weezy. I know. You saying the date just made me think of that. Anyway, I'm Laura, also <laughs> known as Loss. I'm Leslie, also known as You Don't Call Me Less. And um, welcome to the mayhem that is our show. <laughs> Do you want to talk about your works first? I can. Yeah, I totally can. Okay. So I am knitting on some socks. I was hoping to have these done, but we're recording super early. Mm hmm Which is my fault, because Michael, Leslie's significant other, is a big, huge Dolphins fan, and he has the 1 o'clock game, and the Steelers are playing the 3 o'clock game versus the Giants, so... We're back to the season of having to work around the football schedules. Yes. <laughs> and we say we're recording super early. It's like noon. But that's very early for us to record a show because that's hair, makeup, getting things together. So go ahead. It's early for us. Anyway, so I'm knitting on a pair of socks. These are the Honey Badger pattern. And I'm just decreasing for the toe, so they might be finished by the end of the show today. I'm going to count them as finished regardless. <laughs> Here's the first one. And, oh, I just dropped that. I don't even know what I dropped. Ha, ha, ha. This is the yarn. It is Yarn vs. Zombies in the Sock the Vote Cuffies colorway. And the base is Damsel. And I really love how they're coming out. And it's her cashmere base. They're very nice and soft. And I feel like I'm kind of, you can't see them accurately color-wise. But they're very pretty. They're I like, like the pattern that you chose green. to go with it. I, I do like how that's working, and they're kind of um, s swirling a little bit, which I love. So I'm super happy with those. And then the only other thing that I've worked on all week long is um, I got a new bag. That is very cute. Isn't that cute? It's a uh, bird leg bags. Cool. You can see that. Um, first off, the print of the fabric is Ed Emberley. I think that's how you say his name. And he did, you've seen his books because he says the, like, kids drawing books, like how to draw from when we were little, like the thumbprint, and then you draw around your thumbprint things. That's that same guy. And so he has a fabric line now. And there is one that's sheep, which makes me very excited. But I saw these, and she's got the cutest little Aww. <laughs> little crab on there. But anyway, what's in this bag and she was super sweet. She um, donated a bag for the My Hope knit-along I had on the Lala's Knits group. Mm -hmm. So I saw this one, and I was like, ooh, must get. Now that is not very much further than it was last week. But it got some progress. Like a row? or? No, like seven rows. Oh. It's so pretty. Why aren't you knitting on that more? Because the sock <laughs> <laughs> Look. Look here now. <laughs> I just love giving you a hard time. You're so easy to provoke. <laughs> the socks of other things are due on Monday. Today is Sunday. <laughs> Stop I'm giving me that look. <laughs> I, knit <th> <laughs> I knit these during trick-or-treating. So two hours worth of knitting. So more than a row. <laughs> <laughs> well, you were getting days. interrupted, so... Well, I only had 30 trick-or-treaters instead of the 150 I normally have. All my neighbors are lame, and they turn off their lights. And so I'm at the end of a cul-de-sac, so no one would walk down to me unless they were driving on golf carts, in which case I got the golf cart kids. <laughs> so anyway, this is going to be a sockhead hat, which is a very cool free pattern. Honey Badger is a free pattern, too, by the way. And I have it on my size 3 signature needles. But 20 inches, which means that they have a 4 inch um, tip, which is not what I typically get. I typically get the 5 inch. But to get the 20 inch cord, you have to um, do 4 inch. Anyway, and this is Pathway Sock in their Superwash Merino from Lost City Knits. It is the colorway Typhoon. 385 yards of a Superwash Merino. 
It is very nice. And I'm excited because I get to see them at Arkansas Fiber Arts Extravaganza in December. So I'll probably pick up some more. You're going to be a busy little bee in December. For serious. So, other things that are going on in December. <laughs> Since you segued into that and I have no more knitting. Um, <laughs> I'm going to the uh, Fiber Arts Extravaganza just for Friday night, Saturday afternoon. I might stay Saturday night, but I highly doubt it. I think I'm just going to drive back. It's around three and a half hours from here. Um, well, the, the weekend before that, you and I are going to go see a friend. And yeah. then the next weekend, you're in Arkansas. Yes. The next weekend, we see each other again in St. Louis. For the J.C. Boggs class. Excited. The next weekend, you're coming up to Philly. Yes, for a week. To um, Mainly to see family, but I'm not far from Philly, so. <laughs> okay, we'll tell them that. <laughs> we'll see Leslie. Yeah. So, that'll be nice. I'll get to see Laura, like, three times in the span of five weeks, so that's awesome. It is. And you have some travel coming up, too. I do. I am going in two weeks. I will be in Omaha to be a bridesmaid in Karen's wedding, which is awesome. I actually, um, the dress that she chose for the bridesmaids is one of those um, like infinity, rapid a million ways dresses. And I was concerned because, um, not the dress itself, there's nothing wrong with the dress itself, it's a lovely color and all that, but um, like Amy Beth uh, referred to on her last podcast, I have farm girl corn fed arms, I have very large upper arms, big, flabby, in-your-face upper arms, and um, the dress itself is strapless, um, but then you can wrap, you know, again, you can wrap it a bunch of different ways, but, um, so I was concerned about having big, super white, blind you white um, arms exposed, but I think I figured out a way to make it work and feel more comfortable, so. Are you going to um, take a shawl, too? I think that I will, but I won't wear it during the wedding because, you know, it won't match or anything, but I'll probably wear it at the reception. So um, I have that the week be weekend before Thanksgiving, and then I have Thanksgiving, which we're not traveling during. We were thinking about going back to Memphis, but it's just not feasible. And then the following weekend, I'll meet Laura. We're, meet we're visiting a friend, and then I don't travel anymore the next weekend. Then I have St. Louis with Laura and Lynn and Jess and... Hopefully Diane, although I think that she's decided not to go to St. Louis. But, um, and then I get to see Laura again, so. Yep. Yeah, we're both This is the season days. of travel. Yeah, seriously. And then next, January and February, we won't go anywhere. No, and actually next year, um, I'm going to be much more selective about my travel. Not that I haven't really, but this year I've traveled more than I've probably traveled in five years. It's And it's been fabulous because I've met so many awesome people. But it's really hard on me <laughs> to travel that much financially as well as just being away from my family that much. So I'm going to be a lot more selective about where I travel to next year. Um, but anyhow, um, we haven't had, you were talking about knitting on your sock head hat during trick-or-treating. And uh -huh. we haven't done trick-or-treating yet. Um, even I though thought they not, called it off. Well, they, off they did for certain areas, but... Um, I live in the city of Galloway, which is in the township of Galloway. Um, townships are different than, like, county. It's weird. It's all tax-related. Townships are within counties. Yeah, but they're... Anyway, don't get me started. Um, <laughs> and so our little town is going to do trick-or-treating Monday night, tomorrow, from 6 to 8, um, because... We couldn't do it on Halloween. There were still down power lines everywhere. It wasn't safe for the kids to be out. But they still wanted the kids to be able to do it. So tomorrow um, evening we're going to go trick-or-treating. And I think later tonight I'm going to take Kobe to see Wreck-It Ralph. <gasps> because so our friends, um, uh, the friends that we text with all the time we're talking about, a couple of them had seen it and they really liked it. And Laura and I saw the previews for that when we saw Brave. And I knew I wanted to see it, like, then. And Kobe is all about the video games and a lot of these. It's a, it's a video game referencing movie, but I'm very excited. I haven't been excited for a kid's movie in a while, but. I'm so jealous. I'm going to have to steal some children so I'm not, like, the creepy person in the back. Laura, thief of children. 
because it's so much more less creepy to steal children than to actually go to a kids movie by yourself. Well, just go to a, like a matinee. Well, you can't because you're a teacher. Um, anyway, works in progress. How we got super off topic there. I apologize, but um, I am working on my uh, sock the vote um, undelivered party socks, and the first one was has been done. This is the Millie pattern. And I like that pattern. Perfect Day Yarns and the Persephone colorway of Cash Crows. And if Laura had not decided that we needed to record early, then I would have been done. Dang Look. you, Laura. I know. <laughs> <laughs> We're about at the same spot because I started um, decreasing for the toe. You can see my decreased stitches there. And... Um, once I finish, the, I'll probably finish this while we're recording, but I don't have my tapestry needle that's upstairs, so I'll just start working on the other thing that I have on the needle, which, by the way, um, I feel like a jerk because you cannot get this yarn anymore unless you get it on D-Stash because Sarah Emo doesn't dye anymore. Perfect Day Yarns was the brand um, in the Cash Pros, but I'm so in love with this. Like, I'm so in love with I don't know why I've waited so long to knit out of this. But it is just so beautiful, and I really wish Emo would die again. Like, not D-I-E, D-Y-E again. Um, because it's She's so got wild. her hands full with kids. So. I know, but, you know, I'm just selfish, and I really like it, and I wish you would die again. <laughs> and I'm not afraid to tell you that I'm selfish. Um, and so when I finish that, I will pick back up the Georgia on my mind socks. Um, this is the first one. This is out of... Barking Dog Yarns. I'm trying to see if I have the thing I do. Barking Dog Yarns. And this is in the Opposites of Track Space. And this is Antony and Cleopatra. So you get two separate skeins. They're half of what a full skein would be. And they complement. So this one's mostly red with bits of the blue. This one's mostly blue with bits of the red. I've already finished the red one. I've had that done for a while. And I started this one, I think, when we were in Rhinebeck. Oh, really? Um, I think so. Yeah, I think so, too. Because I'm using the stitch marker that um, Amy, that sweetheart, made for us. Well, made for people and gave us one. And um, I haven't touched it since I showed it to you last, but this will be what I work on after that. And then I have a sample knit that I won't be able to talk about, but um, it shouldn't take me too long to knit that. And I'll be knitting other stuff while I'm doing that as well. And You're knitting a lot of different variety of projects. I am, and it's it's actually much more fulfilling than I expected it to be. Um, I knit on a bunch of different things this week, and it's nice to dip your toes in one thing and then another and then another, as long as it's mm -hmm. not deadline stuff, because then I get to... Like, stress out. Yeah, to stress yeah. to really work on it. I have no idea what that's like. I, I know you don't. I mean, it's not like you design for clubs or, you know, designers or anything like that. So, do you have any FOs? Uh, hopefully these by the end of the show. That's it. Oh, that doesn't count. <laughs> I have FOs. Oh, my God, am I carrying the FO segment this week? That's the first, You're I think. You're carrying all the segments. I told no, you that. I that's have not true. Four. I haven't touched my spinning wheel, so mm. that's all you, girlfriend. Um, so, if you are in the Knit Girls Afghan Square Swap and you are missing a square from August, I'm probably your partner, and I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm going to just make a public apology to the thousands of people that watch this show. I'm a jerk, and I'm sorry, and I just have had so much crap going on, and I haven't had time to knit your square. But I have now, and I'm going to be sending it off um, tomorrow. I'm, I've got some goodies I'm going to get in, later on today. And put in the package, but it'll be going off tomorrow. Um, same for my October partner, but I'm only like a week late with that. So I'm less grovelly apology. I'm very sorry about the partner who has been waiting on the square for months. I'm a jerk. Um, but anyhow, I knit this out of Cascade 220 Superwash, and it's the, a honeycomb pattern. I don't remember the actual name. I'll have to look it up. Oh, pretty. But um, it's a nice, vibrant red. That person loved jewel tones, and... I'm a red girl, so... Um, I like it better back. I think that's better... It, it's a more true-to-color, yeah. It's hard for yeah. me to see how well you can see it because we record on Skype, and so the picture of me is this big and the picture of Laura is this big, so I can't tell what you can see. Um, but anyhow, that's one. 
and then my October partner liked um, more earthy tones, browns, greens, etc. So um, I had some more Cascade 220 Superwash and I knitted into the Twining Trees Square. So which pretty! Was, um, I like it a lot. I might knit one of these for my own blanket, I don't know. It was very quick actually. Um, once I realized the pattern is much, it's charted only. There's no written directions and it's free. Um, and there were just a couple of things that could have been a little bit more clear on the chart. But once I figured out what it needed to be, it was no problem at all. Um, and this one is, is really nice. I like it quite a lot. So both of those will be going off to was partners. That, were those patterns out of books or were they out of? No. Um, Ravelry, if you go to the um, advanced search on Ravelry, there is a way that you can do um, what type of item that you're looking for, whether it's a, you know, clothing, whether it's an accessory. And one of the options is a component. So if you click component and then there's Afghan square or Afghan block or something like that, then it'll only show you Afghan blocks. Now you can't, at least I don't think, you can narrow it further by the size of the block. So sometimes you'll find a square that you really like, but it's made for a 7x7. Seven seven, so you have to modify it a little bit, but usually it's pretty easy to do that. Um, or you can just go into the projects and see, find somebody who's made it the right size. But um, Ravelry is wonderful and... I would happily pay a monthly subscription fee if there were one, and I love Ravelry. It's made a huge difference. Um, oh, I finished a cardigan. I was going to say, there is something big that's missing. <laughs> yeah. Well, this is my um, palm to pin, and I blocked it in the hopes that I would be motivated to then put on buttons. And that didn't happen. Um, I even went and got backing buttons. Uh, to because I like having backing buttons on my cardigan to give it a little more strength and it, I feel like it doesn't pull mm -hmm. on the yarn as much then. Um, but I'm just lazy pants and haven't done it yet. But I did finish the Pinate cardigan, which is an Amy Christopher's pattern. And um, all right, I'm it's gorgeous. It is. It is really nice. So I'm going to put it on. And this is out of Amy which is a Louisa Harding yarn, which is 90% cotton and 10% cashmere. And this thing gets very warm. So that 10% cashmere makes a difference. <laughs> it really does. Um, okay, I'm going to move this, um, my camera back a little bit. So if you get okay. motion sick, just brace yourself. Also, if you see my messy room, don't judge me. So we're going to move this back just a little bit. Oof. So, this is the cardigan, and I'm... That is adorable. I am really in love with it. I really like the detail down the sleeve, and actually, I didn't intend, but it comes down just a little bit over my wrist, which I love, but it Yay. fits really nicely. This is probably one of the first cardigans I've ever knit that I really love, because it hides the fat rolls over here, and it makes me look elegant, and I like it. So. And it doesn't need buttons, does it? No. Um, I was actually I'm trying to sit back down here. I was actually um, thinking of doing like a hook and eye closure here at the top, but then I thought, mm, I think I'm just not going to do anything. I'm just going to leave no, it the way No, I think it, it looks is. nice without. So um, the yarn was a little shetty, but um, only when you got to the point like me where you knit two sleeves and then one of them was three inches longer than the other. And you had to rip back. Reading directions is helpful. And this was actually the second sleeve that was too short. So um, I have no complaints. Um, well, the, the grafting uh, up here at the top on the shoulder looks wonderful. And I have no complaints about the way that it looks. But I'm just kind of a grumpy pants about grafting. But um, I do like the sturdiness that the seams give it. So I think I'll probably do another few of her patterns because... They are designed very well. The sleeve cap fits really nicely into the arm side, and I don't know. I'm an Amy Christophers lover, so what can I say? And it's already getting warm. <laughs> so I have to take it off. But, What's um, the temperature like up there? Because it's like 50s here today. I don't know. I think it's um, 40s. Uh, it's already peeling under the arm, so I'll have to shed it. I'll have to um, shave it. 
get my sweater shaver out. It was 40s yesterday, which is when Michael decided that we needed to go to Home Depot and get sheetrock so that he can do something with something. And um, wrangling sheetrock into the back of a truck when you've got, you know, 30 mile per hour winds, super fun. Totally recommend it for anybody. Um, and it's like it. making a kite. <laughs> you could have yeah. thrown. And it's cold and bitter and you didn't anticipate it being so cold so early in the year because you're from Mississippi. <sighs> anyway, all right, so all right. that's my finished objects, and you have spinning, right? You don't have any spinning? No? I'm sorry. I'm actually asking that question. I didn't know. No, I do not have any spinning. But your look of hatred away. I finished my cardigan, right. so I knit things this week. <laughs> oh, no, I'm missing something. Oh, junk. All right, well, I'll show you one of the things. That's upsetting. What did you? What do you not have? My core spinning someplace else, but that's okay. The thing that I was going to talk about for a long time. <laughs> that's okay. We'll do it next week. It'll be fine. It'll be fine. All right. So, I spun my Ooh. November 1st and then finished it yesterday. Some Ever Improving Me. And she's actually, I went to link her shop earlier and she's on vacation right now. Or oh, okay. Kind of taking a break, I guess. So it's Ever Improving Me and Joe like Hunt. She's super nice. Well, yeah, we met her at um, the Middle Tennessee yeah. um, Fiber Festival where we took the class with uh, JC Box. And this is her grapes colorway. It was bats. It ha it's 3.9 ounces of wool, alpaca, silver hologram Angelina, and I just think it's lots of fun. And I got around 175 yards. I was spinning it a little bit thicker, so it's very pretty. I need to figure out a way to fit it into a Hogwarts class. So one of the options is uh, games like Muggle games. So if you can think of a board game or a video game that this fits into, anyone, Bueller, <laughs> Bueller, anyway, I'd appreciate the help, because I'm just not good today. And then well, I the, finished... um, silver in it makes me think of the old, uh, like, joystick game where you uh, were space, space invaders, where you, like, shoot the little, anyway, I can't remember what they're called. No. I'm sorry. I totally just made that an <laughs> awkward moment. <laughs> no. I just noticed that uh, my sock is way longer than the other one, so I'm going to have to throw it back. Oh. I'm That's sorry, okay. boo. It's all right. And then um, Patricia Hobbs had asked me a question about core spinning and cores, so I did core spin something, but I'm just going to talk about core spinning in general. Because we're not doing a book review this week. This is kind of your book review. So she had asked me what I use for cores when you core spin. So if you're not a spinner, what core spinning is, is basically taking a core. and I a pre-made yarn, typically. Typically. You can spin your own cores, you but can. I'm not certain why you would do that, other than you have a lot of fiber. Or time, so this yeah. is mohair, and it's strong. You want your core to be strong. And we took a class with Lexi Boger, who wrote this book, which is called Hand Spun, and it retails for twenty four ninety nine. And she has a whole section in here about horse spinning. She also has some really cool profiles about Steph of Loop, and Steph of Loop actually did a really cool tutorial mm -hmm. on the Ashford site about horse spinning. Yeah, That's she's got what. a couple of different videos on there, and they're both very good. Lexi talks about core spinning, and her favorite thing to core spin with is mohair because it's got all this fuzziness to it. Yeah, that's what I was going to mention, that, that if you're not a spinner and you look at that and you think, God, that's furry, and it, it is, but you want that with core spinning because it helps grab the other fiber. So basically, I have some random fiber here. It's going to wrap around that core when you core spin and so, core spin go ahead I was gonna say it's a really core spinning is a really great way to get 
a lot of yardage out of like a treasured bat, like a bat that's got tons of beautiful colors in it, and you don't want to lose a lot of those colors by spinning it and two-plying it and the colors kind of meld together. If you core spin it, you get to kind of expose each one of those colors in the way that you want to and not have any of the color get lost. Yes, definitely. I think for cool bats um, that have a lot of texture, core spinning is the way to go. The mohair is really grabby and really cool, but because it's got all this extra fluff, that actually wraps around too, and it kind of makes a very, let me add some twists, more lumpy, bumpy, fun core. So it's not going to give you a completely smooth core. So what you want for cores really are strong, things that are strong. Mm -hmm. So Steph tends to use linen, which is a little bit more slick and doesn't grab as well, but you have a nice smooth core. Now the thickness of your core is also going to determine the thickness of your finished yarn. So if I use a lace weight silk, it's going to be a lot skinnier of a core spun yarn than something like a worsted weight mohair mm -hmm. would be. So some great resources for core spinning. We did take a class with Lexi, which was really interesting. She did cover core spinning and then coreless core spinning. And everyone spins a little bit differently. You can put 10 spinning teachers in a room and they'll all tell you different things. The real yeah. reason why I'm using this as my core right now is it was gifted to me, so it was free, and I have it in my stash, so it's available to me. And um, places that sell, we and cone yarns are really easy to just pull off mm -hmm. of when you, as you spin. So places that sell cone yarns are typically weaving shops like Manning's or Webb's. Those are both good resources for those. So I already talked about Lexi's book, which is Hand Spun. And it's got not only core spinning, but a bunch of other techniques. Um, and she actually does one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight different types of core spinning in this book. And then JC, who's a wonderful teacher, and I highly recommend her anytime you can take a class from her. And that's why we're taking a big two day class with her in December, because we enjoyed her big and lofty class mm -hmm. so much when we took it at Middle Tennessee. And she's teaching at SSK for that same reason. A lot of times lately when we've been taking classes, we're trying to find teachers for SSK. Right, evaluate. Secret knowledge, <laughs> um, which is not so secret now. So this is Spin Art, and Leslie, I know you have this book too, and we've yes. reviewed this on the show before. Mm -hmm. it, it retails for $27, and it also goes into course spinning, and it has a DVD in the back as well. But... Um, she does a lot. Her sections are set, um, set out kind of like, this is what you do for singles, art yarns. This is what you do for applying art yarns, stuff like that. But her core yarn section, core spinning section, which if I was smart, I would have had this marked ahead of time. I apologize, y'all. Oh, there it is. She talks about cores as well. And her main thing with cores is that it has to be strong. It can't be thread. And you want to spin it, you want to introduce twists in the opposite direction that you're going to core spin it so that when you, so if I'm core spinning this direction, I'm going to add twist that direction to the core ahead of time so that then I'm taking that twist out and creating a more balanced, even single. Um, Nitty Spins Blog. So Knit, Knitty, the website, which is fabulous and we all love, they have a blog that they do. And Tuesdays are spinning days. And they actually did a segment on spinning Tuesdays on course spinning last year. So I'll try to remember to link that in the show notes. But JC is a wonderful resource. And there's tons of free resources online as well. So, But this is a wonderful book. And I will uh, interject to say if you ever have the opportunity to take a class with JC Boggs, whatever your skill level is, do it. You will you will walk away learning something, I guarantee you. Yep. The only other spinning I have, which is very sad, is the same <laughs> Moonshine Farms in the um, Zombie Farts colorway. It's the... I know I had a tag around here somewhere. I don't know where it went. Oh, there it is. It's the um, Cheviot base. And I need to spin on that. I haven't spun it all on my downstairs wheels. I've been, um, 
upstairs mostly on the lend room. And I have to pick out something to spin for our prize winner um, for the Lala Knits Knit Along, My Hope Knit Along prize winner. So that's next on that wheel. Ooh. I said that it was going to be this, but I lied. Because <laughs> I watched the voice upstairs, not downstairs. So, as I spin. Anyway, that's it for me for spinning. It's a very long spinning. That's okay. Do you have favorite things? I do. Um, I went to a local craft fair yesterday, and it was kind of decided on the whim because Michael and I had gone out and spent the morning at Home Depot, which was super fun. And we were listening to the radio on the way back, and they were advertising um, about this fair, and it was held at the Noise Museum, N-O-Y-E-S Museum, and it's um, local to me. It was about a 15-minute drive, and um, it's mostly what I've experienced at other craft fairs. A lot of um, hand-woven stuff, a lot of handmade jewelry. Um, there were some um, reclaimed wood pieces and um, lots of interesting stuff, but not necessarily what I went to look for um, until the very last little room where I found this little farm. Well, the farm wasn't there, obviously, but the lady was there. And let me get you this card, if I can find it. And I can't. Oh, there it is. So it was Swan Bay Folk, Folk Art Center, and she does basket weaving classes um, at her cool. farm. They also have a lambing day in spring where um, they'll notify all their customers, like, the weekend before the lambing day, or the weekend when all the lambs are born. And um, then you can come the next week and have your picture taken with the baby lambs. And um, she also does a lot of handmade jams and stuff, which I bought a couple of the more interesting sounding ones. She had a peach cobbler jam, which sounds delicious. So it does I got, sound delicious. Um, and it's handsonhistory.com. I do not know whether she sells any of her stuff online. I have not had a chance to check. But she was very nice. Um, and she had fiber from her sheep. So she has 10 sheep um, and one male ram, I guess. Um, and he is a merino. And the fiber that I got was from him, and his name is Merlin. And That is an awesome name. It is beautiful. It is this natural oatmeal. This is his natural color. And she Yum. sends it off to be milled. But everything else she does, um, she they do their own shearing and all that stuff. And it is just so squishy. And I can tell that it was a woolen spun. And I've got, um, and it's funny because she didn't even have yardage. She had no idea. Um, not that I'm trying to make her sound like she doesn't know what she's doing. But I'm just saying, like, this isn't her business. This is just a little side thing. Her job, or her goal was to make the sheep pay for themselves. And apparently they are. But, um... We counted yardage, and it was 144 yards. That makes them sound like they're paying rent. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, uh, it's 144 yards. I did not know on the weight. She thought it was a sport, and I was like, there's no way that's sport. It is way heavier than sport. Um, so I thought it was a worsted. But what I did to determine that was I skeined up already. I have nine skeins of this, by the way. Um, I bought everything she had in that color. And pretty. so what I did was I put it into a cake and I took the, one of the tools that we had in the goodie bags for SSK last year was this little guitar and it's a... You can use a ruler as well, mm -hmm. right? And it's a needle gauge. But this here, this measurement from the one end of the fret to the other is one inch exactly. So what I did was I took the end of it and... Um, this is just called wraps per inch, and so you take it and you gently wrap it around as many times as it'll go with the strands touching but not scrunched together. So I got between seven and eight wraps per inch, so I just gently wrapped it around. And I got between seven and eight wraps per inch, which is an Aaron weight. Um, of course, I did this after I had already knit up a swatch. 
and I started thinking that this was a worsted, so I started knitting it on a 7, and it's like bulletproof. And so then I went up to a 9, and it's much more flexible and very soft, and it's probably one of my first experiences with a yarn that's so, like, the lady lives 20 miles from me, her farm is very close, with a very local wool, and so I was trying to get it wet, to because I swatched, so obviously... So I was trying to get it wet so that the fibers could all expand and I could see what the post blocking size was. And it was an effort to get this wet because it's like, it's very waterproof, you know, because it's the natural wool. And so it took, like, I had to push it down in the water to submerge it and keep it there to get it wet, which is pretty cool. Um, I know that it'll be a nice warm sweater. So this is what the swatch looks like. And I'm very much in love with the color. And I'm trying to pick out a sweater pattern. I'm getting like three and a half stitches to the inch in a drape that I like. So I'm looking for sweaters. So if anybody has a recommendation, feel free to put it in the thread for this episode. Did you wind it off to see how many yards you had? Um, no, I have a hundred. It's 144. She said it's. She counted the um, strands and she uses a two-yard um, winder. So it's 144 yards per skein times nine skeins. So you have plenty. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I'll have enough for pretty much any Aaron White sweater as long as it's not heavily super duper cabled. Um, but it smells nice. And um, I was happy to support somebody who was so incredibly local to me. It's too bad it's two months too late for the locale. But... Um, <laughs> This is going to be the winter of sweaters for me because I finally need them. <laughs> but um, now you're making me jealous with all your sweater knitting. Yeah, there's a, a whole downstairs floor you could have if you so desired. But anyhow, um, I have a couple other things, but why don't you talk for a minute? Or do you want me to talk okay. since you're very busy picking up stitches? Yeah, that's fun. I got my final installment of the Huckleberry Knits um, Fiber Club. And I'm su I've am i been super happy with this club. I'm not going to rejoin because I'm making a deal with myself that I need to spin all three fibers before I can rejoin. But this is the last one. It's not pretty. It is. It's beautiful. And it is. I'm just going to take it out because I have a feeling that this is going to be on the wheel. Oh! Oh, my little free... She always sends free samples with her club, which is super sweet. And this is um, Silk and Sparkle. Just a wee little bit in the Grapevine Fires colorway. That's pretty. And this is the fiber itself. And she always sends you an email, typically, saying what inspired it. And this is Blueface Luster Silk Blend 7525. And it's Dark Deer Heart. And I have just really, it's really soft. I've just really enjoyed being in her club. And it's definitely one that I will join again in the future. She's on Etsy, and her name is Huckleberry Knits. Her real name cracks me up. I really, really like it. Now I can't remember what it is. Scarlet Tang. <laughs> I love that name. Okay. But you can find her at huckleberryknits.etsy.com. She's right there. And she is super sweet. I like Scarlet and her fiber quite a bit. So I'm going to try to hurry up and spin this stuff up. I got this in Portuguese Merino. And I think another silk blend as part of the club. So I've just been really, really satisfied with the club in general. And it's always shipped on time. It's always been wonderful. So super excited about that. And then Susan... From Barking Dog Dye Wor Yarns, I'm sorry, I almost called it Dye Works, sent me one of her new bases. Oh, cool, it's Tweety. It is Tweety, isn't that cool? It's called Old Irish is the Base, and it's 85% Superwash BFL, so it's a little bit of a stronger fiber versus Merino. Then 15% of the Domino Gold Nips, so it's 438 total yards. And this is the Call College Blue. And she had like an orange and a yellow and a green. But I just love this one. I think this will make some great socks to go with jeans. And I can tell by the twist that it is going to be wonderful for 
some cables, or it just, it needs to be cables of some kind, some cabled socks. So. It's very pretty. She's got lovely yarn. I like Susan a lot. Oh, I'm trying to think what else I have to talk about. I got a square. Oh, I got one too. I'll talk about mine after you talk about yours. Good. So, Mohave Knitter sent me a square, and it has a crown. Here we go. She's from oh, Vegas. Cool. So <laughs> it's kind of Vegas themed. So, it's some gorgeous Amethyst Heather Superwash Cascade 220. And she sent Humberto some cat treats, which he <laughs> promptly ate. And this very cute notebook for me. Aww. And some stitch markers, which I've already put in my stitch marker bin because they were falling out in an eyeball. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't very match either of your eyes. <laughs> no, it doesn't. But a lollipop. So I'm super excited about that. I think my squ- my mine is done. My blanket. I might need a square here or there. Um, but it's basically done. I think mine is as well. So, um, so I'll show mine. And I'm sorry, but I don't know the Ravelry name of the person that sent it to me. It's Gail Goldbeck, and she's in Nashville. But I didn't get a, a note that told me who she was. So I'm sorry. I'm not intentionally well, not I'm mentioning. I'm putting it. notes in mine. Like I forget, and then like I'll remember after the envelope sealed and already at the post office. Yeah. So. Um. She sent me, I'll show you the square first. I've got some goodies. I'm trying to make sure they don't fall apart. So she sent me, and it's made out of Blue Goose Glen, Merino Tessa Silk. It looks like hand spine, a 70-30 mixture. Yeah, because it says the weight, but it doesn't say anything about yardage, so it must have been. We met Blue Goose Glen at the J.C. Boggs class. We met her. Where was she, seating-wise? She was across from us. I asked her to if she had an extra. Um, oh yeah, uh, an extra bobbin because I was a, you. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's cool. I still don't know her rivalry name, but now I at least have her mentally pictured in my head. <laughs> so thank you. If that's the same person, yeah. Um, and so she knit me the this uh, beautiful heart square, which I've seen somewhere. Uh, I can't remember where. I don't know that you can actually see that because um, I can't tell on my camera. But it's this beautiful square with the hearts in there. And it's wonderfully soft. And it's made out of hand spun. How awesome is that? I love it. And she included the hand spun that was left, this giant ball. I could probably make a whole other square. So thank you so much, Gail. And um, Gail, Gail, I'm sorry. I don't know if I'm pronouncing your name wrong. I'm such a jerk. Like, that's this episode. I'm such a jerk. But um, she also sent some goodies, some notepads and a pen, and she sent these cool little pencils. And they're much shorter than regular mechanical pencils, but they're, they are mechanical. They're so cute. Like That's I can put, super cool. I can put this in my notions bag, and so it can be like a drafting for a design or something. Very cool. And so she sent these little owls as well. I don't know if they open or what. Um, they look like they open, but I don't know what they have in them. Maybe they're magnets. I don't know. But she sent these cute oh. little owls. And um, some soak in the lacy color, or the lacy scent, which I like. And some stitch markers. And they coordinate with my square. So that's really cool. Very cool. So I appreciate that a lot. Thank you very much, Gail. And please tell me who you are on Ravelry um, so that I can properly thank you and let's see oh, there's the other one she gave me two pencils and I thought I had lost the other one already and I keep losing my earbuds today your ears are rejecting them <laughs> so um uh oh, okay I'm sorry Laura from Jinx Yarns is sent us something for the deep stash dive um she sent that to you do you have it yet I did not check. I checked the P.O. box on Wednesday. That okay. was the last time I checked it. So, so she, Laura, we'll show you that next week when Laura gets it. But she is apparently a kindred spirit. And um, I mentioned something a couple of weeks ago about how if your soul had a color, mine would be red. 
and she says that she's the same way. So she sent us something to give away for Deep Stash Dive, but she also sent um, us each a skein of our own to keep, which was very nice. Thank you, Laura. And this is Spirited Away, and it is so beautiful. It is so fall, and I love it. And this will absolutely oh. get knit very soon. Um, and this is a 80% merino, 20% nylon, which is a, a, a nice base. Um, what am I thinking? Proportion-wise for nylon, because 100% wool socks don't last for me, because um, I'm really rough on my socks. And but this is beautiful, and I love it so much. So thank you very much, Laura. Not you, Laura. Other Laura. <laughs> Like, well, you're very welcome. And this is, I'm sorry, this is Jinx Yarns. And she's in our group, and she advertises in our group as well, and she's really nice. So, she does um, a lot of organic stuff, which is very cool. Mm -hmm. And I like the name of the business. Jinx is cool. And I got my um, Fiber Adventurer Club, and this is a wool gatherings thing for October 2012. And this is Organic Polar. And I'm just going to go ahead and say these are not my colors, although I do think it'll be interesting to spin when I ever get around to spinning it. It is very bright. I don't know if it's coming through how in-your-face bright this is, but it is very bright. But again, the whole point of clubs is to get stuff that you wouldn't typically purchase on your own, so it exposes you to different things. So I do like the number of colors that are in here. I just am a little bit nervous about the brightness of some of them. <laughs> Because I'm more of a jewel tones girl. But I, it'll be nice to spin it and get out of my comfort zone. So I'm not objecting to it. Um, and I'm sorry about if you can hear noise. Um, Michael's just got back from Home Depot and he's about to have a football game. Well, not him, obviously, but his team. The Dolphins are. Yeah. And I think that's it. Do I? Is there anything else on the show notes? I don't even have them pulled up. Just uh, deep stash dive December. We'll start December 1st, and we're going to lay out the um, guidelines because we're not big rules people. No. We'll kind of have – because so I know some people, like, I've been knitting for a while, and so has Leslie, and I was going through my stash, and I really don't have anything older than four years in my stash. Like, most of the older stuff that I got when I was first starting, either I used it up because it was very Michael's Hobby Lobby mm -hmm. or – it was donated to nursing homes or other places. So we're going to lay out some guidelines so that everyone will be able to participate, hopefully, even if you don't have a sash. Yeah, just the yeah. oldest stuff you have, basically. I mean, it doesn't have to be X number of years old. Just go to your sash and pick out some of the oldest stuff you have Yep. and use it. I mean, that's it's really, it's that easy. You can make anything that you want fit into this. We are not strict folks about this stuff. So... Um, and yeah. to be honest, we don't have the time to run down and see if you bought it last week nope. or not. It's, it's an honesty policy system here. So <laughs> um, we, you know, it's just another way to keep everybody involved and active. And I do want to say, um, I don't want to give too much away, but um, we are going to have something so exciting at the beginning of the year. We are helping an indie dyer launch something, and it is going to be so freaking exciting. I'm stoked. I, I don't want to say anything about the dyer or what it is yet because the dyer is still working out the details and it's no small feat. It is a huge thing for this dyer to take on this particular project. So um, we are going to do a new spin along very soon and then um, after that there will be a knit along that will be kind of along the same lines. More details and we later. Always have, yeah, and we always have Expand Your Horizons going on, and mm -hmm. December's Fiber is Gotland. Yes, and so. um, Sandy Kins bought us, brought us some yes. Gotland at SSK, so that's awesome. So we have that to, um, to, to learn play on. With. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. So, um, lots of new stuff coming. We try not to have too many crazy things going on at once. We probably will not do the square swap again for a little while because um, the wonderful Moa, who has run it for us for quite some time, now has a baby, so she has things to do, and she can't I got devote. to hold the baby at uh, Rhinebeck. I did. I got to see her, but I didn't get to hold her. But there was also a lot of people, so. Um, but she was a beautiful baby. But anyway, Moa has things to do now, so she can't manage this, which is understandable. Um, it's a huge undertaking. It really is, um, more, now more than ever, because we've probably grown 
1,500 people since we started this particular round of the swap. So it's, it's a little bit of a beast, so until we figure out a good way to do it, we're going to put it on hold. Um, that doesn't mean we'll never do it again. We're just not, for a little while, we're going to take a break, at least until the first of the year. So, um, but we do want to thank Moa for all her hard work. And, and Definitely. doing all the communication back and forth, and it's no small feat. So we appreciate Making it. Making sure we do our squares. <laughs> yeah, I might have not replied to a PM from her from last week. So I was like, God, I gotta do that, damn it. Um, um, but look, I'm down to the part where I need to Kitchener. So um, wow, I didn't have to rip out that, <laughs> but I did have to rip out a sleeve. So my pity is limited. Uh huh. <laughs> I love your face. Uh -huh. Um, but that's it for me. Do you have anything else? Who are your um, Steelers playing today? They are playing the Giants. Why do you sound so sad about that? Well, okay, so there's a hotel shortage in the New York City, New Jersey area, mm, so they had yeah. to fly in this morning. So I worry about them being well rested and yeah. they can stay there and obviously I'm actually kind of surprised the game's going through because there's so many people in that area that still don't have power and if you were affected by Hurricane Sandy we hope everything's going well for you and your family um, and we hope if you don't have power that you get power soon and, and that the damage was very minimal yeah it's um, it was my first dealing through a hurricane because I lived in Mississippi before but I lived way in the north part by Tennessee so I've not had to deal with a hurricane. And I can't say whether dealing with a hurricane is worse or a tornado is worse because hurricane, there's so much buildup. Like there was, we knew for a week that it was coming. And so there's like all that tension for a week about what's going to happen. And I mean, it's nice because you can get prepared, but there's also so much. It's a lot of stress. Stress. And tornadoes, you don't get warning. I mean, you know there's a storm and there's a possibility. You get an hour, yeah. Yeah, and then it's over, although tornadoes can be really damn destructive, although hurricanes can too. But um, I was very, 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 very lucky and didn't even lose power. Um, so we were able to loan out a lot of the things that we had bought in preparation. We already had a generator. We loaned that out. Um Michael had some kind of submersible pump, and we loaned that out to a guy at work whose basement had flooded. And um, so we were very lucky, and we know how lucky we were. So if there's, you know, we we hope that everything gets back to normal for all of our people, and um, I hope we don't have to do that again because <laughs> that wasn't fun. Um, yeah, that's it for me. You anything okay. else? That's it for me. I think. Awesome. I'm going to go downstairs and watch a game and knit on some socks. I'm going to do laundry and then hopefully take my son to see a movie later. So, Yay, I have to do laundry too. Anyway, y'all yeah. have a great week. We'll it's November. Yeah, oh my wow. God, where did the year go? <laughs> but um, We'll see you next week. All right, bye y'all. Bye y'all.